Karina LeBlanc is not only a celebrated Olympic athlete, she's also someone who can inspire anyone she meets. The two-time Olympian and head of women's football for CONCACAF is also a UNICEF ambassador and was recently named to Canada's Soccer Hall of Fame. Karina, thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. Yes, it's great that we're able to talk to you. So let us know, how are things going? Um, you know, everybody's kind of trying to uh, get through to some sort of new normal now in COVID. Um, I know you, uh, you know, went through some challenges with your health and you're a new mom. So give us a little sense as to so how you're doing and, and how things have been. It's been an interesting last month and a half or so, but uh, now, I, I mean, I have my, I'm able to hold Paris and talk to her and whisper to her and feed her so it's amazing but yeah we gave birth on March 24th which I thought was the, the most amazing thing and I thought I was through the hard shifts because giving birth is not easy um, but then a week later I had shortness of breath and just a bunch of symptoms and as an athlete you always know to trust your gut and I knew my body was off and because a lot of mothers have swelling and stuff post having the baby but um I felt off and I could barely breathe. I was diff had difficulty breathing. And when we called our doctor, uh, they were like, get to the hospital as soon as possible. And that drive was horrific. It was like every fear was going through my mind. Is this it? And then Paris was holding my little finger. And I mean, add the hormones, I was a mess. I got to the hospital, uh, they did a CT scan and it's showed with, uh, along with high blood pressure to that pleural effusion um, from heart failure which is pretty scary, especially at this time with COVID, because, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, here I was thinking I was this healthy athlete. Um, and then all of a sudden it was, you know, if you get the virus, you're at risk. Uh, so I was in the hospital for two days um, and two nights, sorry, three days. And unfortunately in the hospital at that time, there were um, some cases of COVID. So when I was released, I thought I was going home and everything was going to be great. And unfortunately, the doctors told me I may have been exposed to the virus, so I needed to quarantine 14 days. And I'll tell you what, that was, that was a hard time. It was an extremely hard time. Um, my faith got me through it. Um, that perspective and mindset that I, I think it's important that we learn as an athlete, it's how we view things. Uh, so I would write grateful journey, journals. I would, you know, I actually Zoomed with, a, with my teammates, which was the funniest thing. Uh, they just got me smiling, of course, and with family, but it's one of those things you go through it. And when you're through it, it was almost like I needed to ask myself the question, like, what am I meant to learn from this? Instead of asking like, why me, poor me, but what am I meant to learn from this? And it definitely made me stronger. It made me understand that, you know, as being a mother, you already become so much more selfless than before. I didn't know this type of selflessness before, you know, and, because there are times where I just wanted to sprint into the room because it's actually the same. I was in, at home, so I was in our bedroom, but they were in the rest of the house. So I could hear Paris crying. I could hear her just going through all these different things. And I, all I really wanted to do was sprint out there, pick her up and give her a hug and say, mommy's here, it's going to be okay. But, you know, you learn that that would have been selfish for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it wouldn't have been what was best for her. So. Anyway, long story short, we're back together and, you know, it, it's the best feeling ever. You know, what I love about your story is this, the, the purposeful living, you know, you mentioned, what did I learn from this? And I'm really happy that you're doing well and your family's back together. Um, can you tell me a little bit about um, what you've learned through some of those pivotal transitions that you went through? being a day-to-day -day athlete, being an Olympian and then retiring and then taking on the role with uh, CONCACAF, um, you know, you do, you have your foundation. So what have you learned with those pivotal moments of uh, starting some of those new roles or initiatives? Um, I think it's important. I've always felt it's important to ask myself, like, why am I here on this earth? Or like, what is my purpose? And I think throughout the different transitions in my life, I've, I've always asked myself that question was that when I was an athlete, you know, I wanted to be the best athlete that I could be, the best teammate I could be. Um, but I also wanted to be connected to the greater purpose. You know, I, I think as an athlete, I hope people always knew that I would always be the one signing the autographs, always open for being vulnerable with interviews and just sharing my story because it wasn't, it was never just about me. I don't think in life, our lives are not just about ourselves. 
Our lives are actually there to be a service to others. And whatever journey we go through, it's for somebody else. Um, connect that to my faith and spirituality. Um, I, I have always thought like, you know, I always thought like, God, how are you using me? Uh, so as an athlete, that was that, you know, I just wanted to be the best athlete. I hope that whoever saw me felt positive and encouraged by the way I was. Then I transitioned out and sometimes that's hard to transition because I was an, I represented our beautiful country for 18 years, just under 18 years. And it was like my job, best job in the world. And a lot of athletes transition and that transition is difficult because you're like, why am I here? You know, like what, what, what is my job? And you think sometimes your job is your purpose and your only reason on this earth. So when I transitioned out, it was that big question mark. And I remember John Herdman, uh, the year after we won the medal, so in, 20, in 2012, so 2013, he said to me, if you think your purpose on this earth is to kick a soccer ball for Canada, then I failed you. And I was like, what are you talking about? This is all I know. Mm -hmm. And it was a challenging question. And usually the best questions are the ones that challenge you. And I, I started to wonder why was I here on this earth? And what, it's interesting, you always find what you're looking for. And I ended up doing a trip with UNICEF and it was a life-changing trip where I realized that my purpose wasn't, it wasn't just about the ball. And the most powerful thing is on that trip, we were able to drop a ball and change lives through the sport of football or soccer as we call it in Canada. Um, but it was also the connection to people and the impact that me and my story and my failures were able to have on others. So I think that helps me try to figure out that, you know what, I always wanted to impact people for the better. And so um, my why shifted there and my purpose shifted there. And it led me to my position at CONCACAF where I'm now the head of women's football uh, for CONCACAF. And it was the first time for that position. Um, so CONCACAF is the region of North America, Central America, and all the Caribbean countries, I, about 41, not about 41 countries. And then helping grow the sport of soccer, football. And this sport helped define me. And for me, if I was able to go back and do something that defined me and help empower young girls and women to be the women that they're supposed to be on this earth, it was a powerful thing. And my foundation, it's the same thing. It's about empowering young girls to be who they're meant to be. And you talk about the Hall of Fame. I mean, it's all kind of entwined with every day, I just want to be the best version of myself on that day. It's not that every day, like it's, it's, it's in sport. You always want to be your ultimate place. You want to be in the zone. You want to be playing like the best player in the world. That doesn't happen. And the same, same thing in life. You can't always be the absolute top of yourself, but on that day, you can choose to be the best version of yourself given the circumstances. So why am I here on this earth? It's a hard question because most people actually don't. And then when you start seeking it, you'll find what you're looking for and then finding your purpose in everything you do. And for me, my job, because I don't feel like I have a job, but is to, to, to help live into that why of mine, if that makes sense. Can we talk about uh, growing soccer for girls? You know, we see a lot of statistics out there that show around the world that girls are dropping out of sport at young age. We know that um, sometimes girls don't get the same resources that boys do with amateur sports. So um, how are you tackling that with uh, your team uh, in your role? You know, for me, um, the reason why it's important is because I was that young girl who was lost. I used to be shy. Nobody ever believes it. <laughs> but it was when I kicked a soccer ball, my life changed. I was surrounded by women who, or young girls at the time, that, that were like-minded like me. They wanted to accomplish things. So that really drives me because I'm fighting for my younger version of myself. And it's so important because yes, the, the dropout rate is so high amongst girls between a certain age, around 13 to 15, because there's so many other distractions, there's bullying, there's people telling them there's other things to do that can help define their soul. Uh, the opportunities aren't there. And that's huge in, in the CONCACAF region is that, you know, what we're fighting for in North America is not what we're fighting for in Central America and the Caribbean countries. You know, it, it's some of it, sometimes it's just the perception that girls shouldn't be playing sport. Sometimes it's, you know, the parents holding them back. Sometimes it's just no opportunity at all. So for us, it's, it's a focus to create those opportunities, but also changes the perception um, that girls can play. And, you know, the last Women's World Cup showed that around this world, women can play. 
and they're doing it and they're empowering and they're changing conversations in their countries. So it's almost like taking the best practice and bringing it to some countries and showing them because sometimes it's just a lack of knowledge and changing the perception starts by using best examples and then building those foundations um, to grow the game. And so that's what we're doing at Concrete Death. I think most new mothers are trying to figure it out together. I know you are going to inspire them once they hear this interview. We can't wait to see uh, what other achievements you accomplish. You are absolutely right. We should be walking in our purpose and also keeping ourselves open for opportunities. It seems like opportunities have found you through some of the things that you've done. And uh, we can't wait to hear more about your journey. Thanks so much for talking to us today. Thanks for having me.